Hello, Facebook friends. It's Carla, your online doctor, with today's Live in 5. Today is Wednesday, January 29th at 5 p.m. This was supposed to be Monday's talk, so we're talking a little bit, and it was colder <laughs> when I started to talk about this. So it's officially winter around the world, It's a, or at least the Northern Hemisphere. It's even winter in Florida on some days, right? Um, last week especially. An important topic to discuss during the winter months is called the winter blues. Okay, the real medical name is Seasonal Affective Disorder or SAD. Now, I've talked about this in my private Facebook group. Um, I have a couple of friends who've asked me to talk more about it here. So you're getting a little bit of it for the next couple of days. So the symptoms of SAD, <laughs> appropriately named, include oversleeping or difficulty sleeping. So either extreme, carbohydrate craving, so like the sugar craves, Overeating, weight gain, difficulty concentrating, lack of interest, fatigue, and anxiety. It is classified as a temporary mood disorder, which affects up to 20% of people every year. Okay, now it can be lower, it can be 5% to 10%, but as many as 20% have been reported on the different studies that I looked at. Approximately 75% of cases are in women. Now, the majority of cases are also in people living in northern climates. So it's not as common down here, obviously, in South Florida. But in the northern climates where winters are longer and colder and the skies are grayer, earlier, <laughs> your days are short, um, you're more prone to this. And I know people who've moved from Florida up north who are more prone to it because they're used to sunny days and then all of a sudden they don't have those days and it can be a real, real um, stress on the system, okay? So some risk factors besides the ones that I've mentioned already include family history, of course, and people with certain behaviors. This was interesting, such as someone who is prone to binge eating, someone who's prone to binge TV watching, and those that sleep way too many hours at a time. Okay, now that doesn't mean that you can't have a, a weekend where you sleep in and kind of catch up. I'm talking about in general where people just sleep too much. Now, there is no single identifiable cause for seasonal affective disorder, but it's linked to a decrease in neurotransmitters, including serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine, and has an increase in melatonin and that's due to the lack of daylight okay so the shorter days mess up the system and the body senses that it is nighttime and it's ready for you to go to sleep so your melatonin levels are higher this disturbs your circadian rhythms and it also because of the lack of sunlight decreases your vitamin d all of those together have been attributed to what causes this disorder. Now, many doctors tell you to just get over it. Don't worry, it's no big deal. By the time March rolls around, you'll be fine. Um, or just, like I said, or just wait, winter passes. And then if, you know, if you're really push them a little bit, they're gonna prescribe antidepressants, prescription medications that you don't need. And all of that, bad medicine is just bad, okay? Because this is a real condition and it should not be treated by, you know, brushing you off or just putting a Band-Aid on it with a prescription. So let's discuss some better options that are natural and will likely do you some good, okay? So let's start with nutrition. In the winter, we often turn to comfort foods, right um we just because it's cold or we you know we don't we're all bundled up we it just makes you feel better right so but that can actually worsen the problem especially if the foods are filled with starchy carbs and sugars it's worse if it's processed food uh, always um but focus instead on seasonal nutrient dense citrus fruits and root vegetables 
Okay, so that's going to give you, um, I mean, you can make some great stews or soups and things like that. Make them nutritious, but keep those starchy carbs away and obviously the sugar. Enjoy brain-boosting foods that are high in omega-3 fatty acids such as salmon and walnuts and really try your best to watch what you're eating. Number two for today is exercise. Now, don't use the excuse that it's too cold outside not to exercise, especially if you live up north, okay? It'll be, it's gonna be that way for quite a few number of months. So you can't use that as an excuse because that means you're basically not gonna exercise until March or April, and that's just not acceptable. Now, exercise is one of the best mood boosting activities that there is. It causes ser serotonin levels to increase and serotonin is, serotonin is the, the neurotransmitter they call the happy neurotransmitter. That's going to make you feel happy. So if bundling up and going for a brisk walk does not appeal to you or braving the weather and getting to a gym doesn't work, well, use your own space. Okay, you ha push the sofa aside, make a little space, practice some yoga in your living room, crank up the music and just dance around your apartment or your house, or get a mini rebounder and put on the TV and bounce around for 30 minutes, but get your exercise in. So those are just two things. Tomorrow I have a few more truly effective and specific things for seasonal affective disorder. So make sure you come back tomorrow. Tag a friend who might be experiencing this problem or has a family member that has experienced this problem because this is a real thing, okay? And winter is far from over for a lot of you northerners. So let's get some education going on so you guys can actually feel happy for the rest of the winter. So on that note, I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you again tomorrow for another Live in 5.